Hi everyone, I'm Meg from Love and Stamps and I hope you're ready for a fun evening. So we have a lot of cards to show tonight. I have actually a couple of baskets of them. So here's one basket. Um, that front card might look familiar. Here is another basket. Um, all kinds of goodies to show you. I counted them up. Uh, I think that there's something on the order of like 70 cards uh, that we're gonna go through tonight. So lots of fun things uh, because we are celebrating the beginning of the uh, July through December book and celebration book. And I knew you guys are gonna be excited to see a lot of projects from these. So um, I'm going to start off uh, with a card that we are going to uh, make together. And it has a great technique. Um, I actually used it the other day on my Hippo Happiness card. So it might look a little familiar, but I'm gonna do a different version of it. And we're gonna do the fall version. So I have my yummy fall colors here all sorted out. Uh, pale papaya, pumpkin pie, Cajun craze, and early espresso, so all good ones to choose from. And we're gonna use the Hello Harvest stamp set, and I'll show you um, some other samples with that set too. So yay, it's kinda nice to see you guys in the evening. So thanks for everybody who's here tonight. Hey, Kathy and Sharon and Paula and Sandy, um, Sue, everybody else whose names aren't showing up. So say hi so we know where you're watching from. We can all kind of, you know, have a good time being together. Um, it's just always fun to kind of know where everybody is calling calling in from. So, hey, Rita. Um, hey, Jenny. All right, you guys ready to uh, get stamping? I just realized I didn't quite, like clean up everything from the back of my um, studio. Oh, well, that's okay. There's lots of good stuff to see here all the time. So, I'm going to flip my camera down, and we are going to, hey, Kelly, um, get started here on our first card with the... Hello Harvest stamp set. So here we go. All right, so like I said, Hello Harvest um, is from um, the new mini catalog and it is a um, really fun stamp set. I love pumpkins um, for fall because they work for lots and lots of things. They're not limited to any um, one particular um, occasion or anything like that really. You can use them for whatever you like. And uh, the paper um, that we're going to use actually comes from the same Rustic Harvest paper set. Um, these are the papers uh, in the Rustic Harvest. So they're um, some pretty ones there with like different kinds of um, gourds and flowers and so forth, chrysanthemums. And then the backs are all black and white, which gives you lots and lots of possibility for what you can do with these. Because anything black and white can be turned into black and whatever other color you want. Now, if you're wondering about this um, paper, it is not six by six paper. It is 12 by 12 paper, so it comes like this. Um, but I cut this um, up to show you how um, the Designer Series Paper Share works, the Loven Stamps one, comes with um, card bases. So you get the um, companion card bases along with your Designer Series Paper, um, because the most common statement I get from people is, oh my gosh, Meg, I don't need more paper. I have so much already. Um, because I, you don't use it, which I understand. So this um, paper share is designed to help you use your paper. So it'd be really easy to just take your favorite paper out of here, um, cut it down to um, like card front size and fold your card stock in half and go ahead and mount your card and get going. So um, anyway, if you are looking for a reason to get more paper, um, the Loven Stamps Paper Share is a great one to sign up for because you get uh, not only the designer series paper, but also the ready to use card bases, which will help you use what you get, which is my goal for you guys, okay? So let's bring in our pieces for this. Oh, the link is in the video description, um, whether you're watching now or later, it's there already uh, for that. Um, paper share. So you can go ahead and sign up for that. All right. So supplies for this are really simple. We need a, an extra block, which I just realized I did not have. So here's my extra block. Um, we need some watercolor paper. Although the other day I did this on regular basic white cardstock and it worked fine. Uh, just a little bit different technique and then, um, star stamp and spritzer to go with this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this piece of watercolor paper and I want to have a background on it. So I can just go ahead and stamp our pumpkin, but it looks a little lonely there to me all by itself. So instead I want to give it like a really solid base. 
Um, and we're gonna do that with this clear black. So what I'm gonna do is take my ink pads and I'm gonna start with the lightest one. So I've got pale papaya. Um, morning, or, <laughs> good morning, I'm saying good morning to everybody. Hey, Tanya and Kathy and Anna and everybody who jumped in since I last said, oh, Joanne and everybody. Um, yeah, if you're just tuning in, make sure you say hi where you're, um, where you're calling from. Calling from, uh, I don't know what century I'm in, but not this one, where you're, you're tuning in from. So what I'm going to do is uh, go ahead and ink up my black. Now, I have this tendency to want to do it like this, but really, you can't see what you're doing then. So it makes so much more sense to just go ahead and flip your black this way and go ahead and tap it on the pad because then you can see what you're doing. So we have pale papaya set that one out of the way. Now I have my pumpkin pie. And again, uh, you could do this, but it's so much easier to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, kind of add more pumpkin. I'm going to roll down. Did you see how I just rolled that ink down there um, to add some more? So pumpkin pie is my next darkest color. And then my final color for this um, watercolor black technique is Cajun Craze. And I'll show you one from the main catalog with sun prints. Um, that I also did same thing, kind of old habits die hard. Um, got a clear black, you might as well take advantage. Look right through it. Okay, so now can you see here where I have all that ink on my block? Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and um, spritz this. Now uh, on my, um, when I do this sort of in other places, uh, I would you know set a towel out or something, but I have this plastic bin here, so I'm just gonna use this as my base. You don't want to get your stamping space all wet. Um, let's see. And then I'm going to go ahead and spritz on here. So this is just filled with water. Now, I just saw a note the other day from somebody who was really frustrated. They're like, I can't. Oh, it was aqua painters um, or water painters. The water painters, um, if you're doing watercolor with them, because it's watercolor month, um, don't forget that the barrels twist the opposite direction you expect. With the spritzers, they twist the way you expect, and the lids come off, and then you could fill this with a lot of different things for different techniques. Water, um, little drops of ink refill, alcohol. Um, future floor wax was a technique we used to use. I haven't tried it with these. I'm not, I don't think you wanna do floor wax with your spritzers. That's more of a water painter thing, but all kinds of possibilities. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and take this here and I'm gonna spritz this a few times so that I get a pretty good amount of water. See how my water is starting to spread there. And then I'm gonna take this and flip it over onto my black um, or onto my watercolor paper and just press it down. And I love the amount of water I've got on there because I just got a really nice spread. The harder you push it, the more that water spreads and sinks in. And I'm just gonna leave it there for a second. Okay, you see that nice, um, that nice bit there. And then um, I'm actually gonna leave that little bit of uh, extra ink on there. So sometimes I'll take my, um, like a piece of Kleenex or paper towel or something and I'll blot that extra water. Um, but I'm honestly not going to worry about it right now because I kind of like that effect. So I'm gonna move it around so that it, it has a chance to dry. All right, so then this piece is uh, going to dry. The watercolor paper um, is meant to tolerate a lot of water. So it's really gonna dry pretty quickly. Um, which is fantastic for our purposes. Um, if if you want to blot it, I would go ahead and take something and blot down just one time and then pick up. You don't want to wipe because you don't want to mess up that cool background square that you've created with your block, okay? So watercolor block printing. Um, I'm going to take my uh, Cajun Craze cardstock then to match. One of the great things about Stampin' Up! stuff, you guys all are experts and know this, um, the matching... Uh, Designer series paper, cardstock, ink, all the things here. Um, they really make the finished project look really nice and uh, professional. So I'm gonna set this here. Now, um, while this is drying, I have uh, here my Leaf and Label Amber Gems Combo Pack. So these come um, a whole mess of leaves. I, uh, 50 maybe? Anyway, a whole mess of leaves um, come with this kit. And they are kind of a like, um, craft paper on the back side, uh, this sort of a dark um, neutral craft, and then they're actually a little bit more finished on the front side here. Um, 
I can't, there we go, get that out. Um, they're a little bit more finished on the front side, so you could use them either way. All right, I'm, I'm tired of waiting for this to dry, so I'm going to blot it here. And I'm gonna blot one more time. And then I'm not gonna stick my projects in that space for the rest of our video. Watch this, huh? Look, Ma, no hands. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and set this here, and uh, I'm gonna bring in the hello from our stamp set here, Harvest Hellos, and I'm going to go ahead and ink it up in Early Espresso. All right, Kathy says, yours never comes out as beautiful as, oh, your hers never comes out as beautiful as this, love the white frame. So um, a couple tips for you, all right? Um, one of them is watercolor paper is much more forgiving than basic white cardstock. Um, the watercolor paper will um, absorb a lot of water so you don't get as much running and so forth. Um, another um, thing to do is think about the colors you're picking. So these really um, are almost tints of a very similar shade from Cajun Craze to Pumpkin Pie to Papaya. Um, so I get a lot of continuity in there. And then um, the other thing is to just practice a few times. So you're gonna get a different effect. And part of the love of this technique is deciding that what you get is like what you like. So you gotta, you have to love your art, so. All right, I'm gonna ink up my hello stamp and I'm gonna turn my leaf a little bit to the side and go ahead and stamp my hello on there. Now, because this is not um, our regular cardstock, it takes a little longer to dry, so you want to be a little careful about how you're gonna, you don't wanna touch that while it's drying. And I have some of this fabulous um, ribbon. It's like golden uh, vanilla striped something, something, something. I don't know, the link is in the video description for all the supplies that I'm using, so you can find um, all of the things there. And I just got a little piece, so I'm going to just knot it up here at the top and just sort of give that a loose um, a loose element there. So that's going to go on our card, too. All right, I feel like we are doing pretty well here. So it's time to stamp. I'm going to go ahead and ink up my pumpkin. Now, when you're stamping on watercolor paper um, you with line art, you want to be very um, careful uh, and you want to be like, make sure your stamp is really well inked and then you're gonna press and hold, okay? So that you get a really nice transfer of ink. Um, Sue Han says, hi from London, hello. Oh my goodness, it is very late there. Yes, um, an unusual time, you're right. Usually we get together in the morning, so, uh, which I realize is a much better time for you. So I'm so glad you could join us. All right, um, Kelly says she's practicing her watercolor um, she's, she's, you're working on it, right, Kelly? <laughs> All right, so we have our um, pumpkin here, and then we're gonna kind of put our leaf up here, and I'm gonna um, orient this so that our hello is horizontal, so I don't really want it to be like at an angle or something. We already have our leaf at an angle, that's enough. We want our, our words to line up. And I wanna fill in some of this other space. So in this stamp set, there are great choices for that. We have these flourishes, we have some lines, we have these extra flowers, leaves. So I went ahead and grabbed um, the flower here and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp a couple of these. Now part of the trick of filling in space is making sure that some of your images go off the edge of the paper so that it doesn't look um, like everything's, you know, so you want it to look like it's cut from a large piece, okay? So I'm gonna make sure that some of my images are um, popping off. Okay, those are coming all, a lot off. All right, and I'm gonna get my hello back on here, kind of give myself an idea, and I'm gonna turn these little guys. All right, there we go, okay? So now we have our pieces, and I'm gonna bring back in my Cajun Craze cardstock. This is going to layer on here like this. Um, but you guys know I don't love it when things are kind of floating um, with no base, no presence, like holding them down to the paper. So I'm gonna bring in here this piece of the designer series paper, and I'm gonna slide this under here, just like that, and go ahead and pop things up with Stamp Dimensionals and through the magic of television, ta-da! We have our finished card here. Um, and look, I had almost the exact same uh, effect there on our, our block, okay? So um, you can see up here, there's a spot where in this particular block print, I didn't have as much water, um, which is totally fine. It's really just a different effect. There's not um, a right or a wrong or anything like that. And then I'm gonna bring in some of these little um, 
gem. I love these amber gems. They're really gorgeous and kind of put them here around our little hello like that. Okay. All right. So that gives us one good possibility here. I'm going to close up some ink pads um, with our pumpkin set, uh, our harvest, hello harvest. Uh, and I have a couple more samples for this particular one. Let me grab them out of my bin. Um, so one of the things that I love about being a demonstrator is that we share um, card ideas with each other. So here are some other samples um, using this particular stamp set. So this one was made um, by Margot Richardson, the very talented stamper, and she went ahead and watercolored. And uh, for each of these, um, for this pumpkin here, there's a die to cut it out. And then there are also these fun pumpkins here that aren't, um, they don't match stamps, so they're meant to be die cut. And they have these cool texture elements in them. So this is a really outstanding pumpkin, um, plus a banner, which is great. So always kind of fun to have a banner on there. So that's by Margo. Um, this card is by Joyce Fracco, and she has kind of a fun um, open for hers. Hers opens like this. And then actually, I think that this little bit here um, is a bookmark. So it's one of those um, pieces. Well, you could, no, I guess not. No, okay. Well, actually, so I'm kind of intrigued by this idea now. All right, so what she did is she put this on like as a card closure. So let me get this back on here. So um, Joyce put this on as a card closure like this. So now it's kind of holding the card shut. It goes like that, if you can see. And then um, once you open it, then this piece is loose and so forth. But I was actually thinking it would be a really fun like bookmark piece. If you've seen that one that goes on the corner, um, I haven't done that project for a long time. I need to do that. Anyway, another project by Joyce. Here is another one by Natalie Travis. Um, also kind of a fun um, score in a different place. And this punch is in the catalog. We'll find it here on our catalog tour. Really outstanding. And I'm going to talk about cutting that. So remind me if I don't. Um, and then finally, a uh, card by Jill Olson. And she used um, this floral um, piece here. Just pretty colored as um, sunflowers or is it like Rudbeckia? Mm, brown eyed Susans. Uh, so kind of fun from my gardening days. So, okay, that gives us um, some good ideas for these. Oh, I'm glad you guys like this. Hi, Deanna. And I am going to um, go ahead and clear my space just a little bit now um, because I'm going to give you uh, the tour of samples from these holiday catalogs. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Um, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of samples there. And then um, we're gonna go switch base after that and I'm gonna show you something um, from the woo, hostess items and then I'm gonna show you some celebration sets. So um, we've got lots of fun things. If you haven't gotten your book yet, um, make sure you, this is pretty. I've never even noticed this. It's so funny, every time I look through here, I see different things. Um, if you haven't gotten your book yet and you need one, make sure you reach out to me um, on my website at Lovin Stamps. There's a um, catalog page and you can request a catalog there, so. All right, yeah, Carol, hi. It is a different time, that is for sure. Um, oh, and Sue said she really liked the something, that something something ribbon. Oh, the something something ribbon, yes, something something. We'll see it when we go through the book and then we, we can see what it's actually called. So if you search something something ribbon, it won't show up. All right, Sweetest Christmas. Here is a card by Evie Di Piazza, um, a really fun one, and she used this um, is the one of the background dies in here. She cut it twice and she did one this way and one this way. Um, so double layered to make that fun plaid. You could do them in different colors, all kinds of possibilities. Lovely. Um, this card is by Ann Clummer and she did a really simple version. This candy cane stamped, this one is popped up. So you don't have to be super elaborate necessarily with this one. Um, this card is by Joni Reinert and she used that same die here that Evie did, but she just used one and then um, the dies here. And then these snowflakes um, were in last year's uh, holiday catalog, the July through December catalog, they're back. Um, so you can get those again if you were really missing them. And then this one uses the designer series paper um, and this is by Jen Co. And I'm not sure how well you can see, but she used the Mary, um, Mary, I can't remember what it's called, the um, embossing folder with the music notes on it. So if you if you looked up the embossing folder, you'd find it right away, okay? So some good ideas there. Turning the page, we have like the full size here. Oh, and a note on these sequins. I've used them for a couple of things now. These sequins um, that are in this suite are definitely 
um, not just Christmas related. They're really pretty colors. Um, you'll see them in more videos as I um, go along through this catalog through Maker Mornings with Meg, which is the normal time, 9.30 a.m. Central Time. Um, I know everybody's, everybody's thrown off here, but you'll see those again because they're really useful. All right, the next one is Spruced Up. This is a card by Amy Story, and I adore this. She did a little present. She did a little tag. This is a tag die set that I've featured before. Um, and then this paper, the stripes here from the candy canes. Um, and then we have the, let's see, Regal Reindeer, which is fun. I don't have any samples of that, but I do have Mistletoe Magic. This is by Laura Bartow. And she um, used this really pretty designer series paper, which is still coming up and then these gorgeous um, elements here. So a really um, pretty card. I think I better not put these in the catalog, in my catalog or I'm gonna end up <laughs> losing track of things. All right, next page, Santa Express Suite. I look forward to using this one also. And I have a card here um, by April Booth. And this is um, these cute little guys here. You can stamp and die cut. And then there are, are these fun scenery designer series papers here. Um, that you can put behind them. And I love, actually, I think in the catalog, they put a piece of vellum over this to soften the background, which is a really fun thing too. Oh my gosh, these little penguins in the car are darling. So another really cute idea for that. Um, there's the stamp set. Here's a simple card by Susan LaCroix, just um, three snowflakes. So you don't have to go crazy. And this is on the um, pearlescent cardstock, which probably doesn't show super well in the video, but um, is really nice. And then these are the sequins uh, that you'll want to glue down um, from the annual catalog. So, all right. Uh, here is this one that I um, said I wanted to make sure I pointed out. Where was that card? Uh, here it is. So this die, or is not a die. This, <laughs> this shape is a punch shape. And why can I not find it? It's not a Christmas card, is it? No. It is this one. It's a punch shape and it is really, really useful. So um, on the samples here, like this one, they went ahead and used it square like this, but check this one out. All they did was chop the little pieces off. So you're like chop across there and chop across there and you have a whole different shape. This is a really useful punch shape to have. And I love that it has like the dots and so forth around it. So like if you were chopping pieces off, you could totally chop this one off and um, not have it look like you know it was a chopped up punch. So um, definitely think about that um, handmade wishes bundle. And remember, for each fifty dollars that you order, um, you get a celebration item um, for free. So this is a great time to have a good wish list. Uh, this card is by Carol um, Kalistuki, and really love the way she did these two layer dies. So this is a two layer die kind of thing, kind of like two step stamping, but two layer dies. Um, oh, Kathy says she can't wait for the, um, for the train set. Oh, and Sue said it's Melody, Mary Melody. Um, oh, this is so pretty. Look at here inside too. You guys see that? Uh, anyway, um, two-step stamping, gorgeous, also two-step die cutting. And you can see how pretty this is and how pretty this designer series paper is. So if you are, is there anybody who is like a traditional Christmas cards must be red and green, um, kind of person? I, I actually love a good purple Christmas card, so it's not me, but I do love red and green too. This, this set is for you, so definitely lots of good red and green possibilities. All right, um, this is a really cute set. I'm looking forward to using this. Um, the next one that I have here is the, uh, oh, I thought it was this one. Is it this one? It is this one. Um, and I don't know who made this card because they didn't put their name on it in the demonstrator spot, but here it is. And this is a great uh, die set. If you're looking for a new set of Christmas dies, um, I love the style on these. Um, there is a fun scripty um, greeting set that goes with, is included with this. Um, some good backgrounds and just a really nice card. So uh, I love that one. And oh, thank you for the stars, Kay. <laughs> um, Let's see, and then I have uh, this one, Christmas Barn, which is really popular where I live. So I live in the middle of um, fields of corn and soybeans in central Illinois, and so we have lots of barns like this um, around, and so this is a really popular one. So these cards are by Ramona Simpson and Deborah Schaefer, and both um, colored this. So this one, um, I think, is colored with the Stampin' Blends alcohol markers. I think Ramona did hers where she just stamped it in red and then she just used like an aqua painter or a water painter uh, or a water painter or a, a 
blender pen to just mush that color around and it's beautiful. So there's plenty of ink from just the stamped image. You don't really have to add extra ink necessarily if you don't want. So really fun, um, pretty cards with Christmas barn. And then moving along, um, I have the Lights of Glow Suite and I have a beautiful card by Jennifer Blayshack. And this die set is designed with all these little tiny holes in it. Here you can kind of see here. So that the paper behind will shine through um, the dies. And so it's very specific that way. And I absolutely love the way she's got this gold behind the tree. There is um, glimmer paper here you can use too. Um, but then there is this uh, specialty paper, which is also included in the designer series paper share. So um, when I talked about this designer series paper share at the beginning with the cardstock and the papers and so forth, the specialty papers are included. So you'll get samples of those also. Okay, so there's some lights to glow. And this is by Kimberly Kane. And she um, is showing off the papers here, which I adore also. So you don't really have to necessarily even use some of the main images from a stamp set to get a really great looking card um, from that. So lots of good possibilities there. All right, so next we have, oh, that's the Lights of Glow page. And uh, this actually die set that goes with it is gorgeous. You're gonna see projects um, in Maker Mornings with Meg from that. So next we have Christmas Scotty. This is by Mel Lampert, which is super darling. And uh, she used these, the Scotty Punch like this and added a little um, bow there to that. So, okay. Um, we have also, I have a Yeti to Party um, card by my friend Cindy Bauman. Um, and Cindy did kind of a fun thing here. So hopefully you can see the background of that card and the um, folder that's on there. Let's see if I stop moving, maybe you'll be able to spot it. Um, and then she cut out the Yeti, and then this is a gift card holder. So you'd put your gift card in right here, and she continued that folder here on the other side. So a really clever card um, from Cindy. Um, Kathy said the barns are very New England also. Her set is, oh, that's your favorite set in the new catalog. Yeah, when I come across your favorite set, make sure you guys are like, oh, this one, this is it. This is my favorite. Um, I say lots of things are my favorite, so we'll see how I do. I don't think I've said anything's my favorite yet. Oh, but here we might come up with it right here. So we're going to come back to this trees for sale set. This is what I'm going to feature for, um, the, uh, Loven stamps tutorials for the month of July. So when you order, um, any amount for me, you're going to get a set of four tutorials, um, via PDF for, um, this stamp set and it's coordinating die set sneak peek. Um, camper there uh, coming up for that. So watch for those um, watch for those projects to post throughout the month as part of Make Our Mornings with Meg. And for those of you who are regulars, I know we're kind of on like summer school Make Our Mornings with Meg right now. Um, I will be here on Monday and Wednesday next week, so you can watch for those. Um, let's see, pretty snowflake paper. This stuff is gorgeous. And then I have um, our PCU set, which is very pretty also. Um, Debbie Garthwaite did this card and just a really simple um, stamping there on our cards. Okay, storybook gnomes. Um, if I had to pick a sweet that is my favorite, I am kind of a fan of this. Now, I'm not normally a gnomes person, but these gnomes speak to me. I honestly think that it's the color scheme in the... Um, the color scheme in the set that's doing it for me. So these I used uh, the other day for a project. These are the rhinestones that are included in this suite. And actually um, in the designer series paper share that closes on Friday, um, you can still sign up for that. The paper share uh, is $45. And then there's an embellishment share too. And you get half a package of, I can't remember, a whole bunch <laughs> of the embellishments from this catalog. Not quite all, the wooden ones aren't included, but the rest um, are there. And so you would get these too, and they are gorgeous. So here are my cards for this. Um, this is by Liz Young. And I love this as sort of a know me kind of thing. Um, you know me so well, ha ha ha. And she has um, die cut from the designer series paper. So I love when the designer series paper matches the dies, you can cut out the pieces, um, like in this little piece of art here. And so she has this um, attached to open in a different way. And then this is by Tammy Ackerson. And she kind of did something similar, um, just a regular card there. Uh, have a holly jolly Christmas. So great gnomes. Is anybody else a huge gnomey fan? 
Um, hi, Julie. Uh, okay, so no, no me fans. All right, well, I like it. <laughs> um, Snowman Magic is a, an assembly set. So this is sort of like uh, paper piecing. Um, well, it is paper piecing. So basically you're gonna die cut all the pieces you want and then make fun scenes. And this card is by Teresa Tucker. I think Teresa's on here. Um, so a super duper cute card. I love this snowflake frame. It would be great for shaker cards like they're showing here. Um, you can use it just as a frame for a scene like this. Um, I There's a zillion things you can do with this. And this set is uh, a great one to combine with, I'll just show you now, um, the set from Hippos. So these little guys here. So if you want your snowman to have a parasol or you want your snowman to have a boat or your snowman to have a scuba stuff, I'm not sure how a snowman could go scuba diving but all the fun little pieces there. So cute card, thanks Teresa. All right, and then we have, um, oh, Kathy says she loves the gnome colors. Well, then the, the paper will be really pretty, so. All right, oops, sorry about that. Weird notifications. Okay, um, this set I haven't gotten yet, but I will have it because it is gorgeous, perched in a tree. Um, then we come to Rustic Harvest, which we used, um, for uh, our card tonight. So this is our Harvest Hello um, demo from the beginning. So if you missed this, you can go back and rewatch when the video posts. Um, oh, Rick says he loves the swap cards. Thanks, Rick. And then um, we have also a sample here from uh, Margaret Van Vliet. It's a very talented demonstrator and stamped um, these pieces right here from the Gathered Wheat set, which is just a little bit different of a vein. And um, a thing to note about this, on here, um, I'm gonna pull her card apart just a little bit. Do you see how this is all attached together? Um, this die actually has little um, marks on the side so you can, uh, they're score lines. And so when you cut it, it scores and then you can set it down. So if you were doing something like a um, table setting art or something like that for like your Thanksgiving tables, um, this would be a great one to have. All right. Uh, then we're going to fast forward. I have two sets here, um, soft seedlings and painted pheasant, which were super popular in our demo, um, swap. So this card is by Sandy rule and she used the soft seedlings. Um, this card is by, uh, Leanne Graff and she used the same one and then also cut out the, um, uh, maple leaf. This card is by Susan Elise Morton. And she used that tag set that I really liked. And so this is sort of like hanging down from the tag, which is kind of a cool, pretty effect. And then um, I am the orange person. So this card is by Colleen Magnus and these colors speak to me. She also used the folder. So um, this last card here really highlights the folder. Um, this is by Linda Bowen. And I think you can probably see the best on this one, um, the texture and um, so forth of this, this designer's, or embossing folder is right here on the catalog page. Um, let me show you that on Colleen's card, she used it just across the corner here, which is really kind of a fun contrast there. So you don't have to use it everywhere to have it be really effective. And then finally, a beautiful card by Mary Ellen Stites with the pheasant. And we will definitely be coming back to um, this technique. It's a baby wipe technique. And I've showed it before on Maker, for, Maker Mornings with Meg. Um, I will be reintroducing it soon. And then this circle is from um, the Lights A Glow Suite. It's actually uh, that Christmas circle. And look at how precious those dots are. Um, these, uh, I'm gonna bring you back to that catalog page actually, because I don't want you to miss it. Even if you're not, <laughs> like if you're not making Christmas cards, um, definitely think about this Lights A Glow um, set for uh, non christmasy purposes. Where is it? Okay, I must have missed it. Sorry, guys. Um, so this circle die is just wonderful. And is it like closer to the middle of the catalog? Oh my goodness. Like, there it is, there it is. Um, so this die set here, um, you can kind of see that it has this little circle element in it. It is gorgeous. And then this little um, like sort of falling snow or like raising confetti or these elements are not just for Christmas. Um, they are for lots of things. This big um, like starburst kind of thing here. This is a, a die set that is going to be really handy for all kinds of things. So 
um, don't miss out on that one. And you know, celebration is the best time to get your stuff anyway. So, all right, I have um, an Apple Harvest card here by Amanda Hinkamper, and she did a gorgeous job of um, getting these all cut out, fussy cut. And then we move on to some Halloween things. This black and white paper, not just for Halloween. I used it for our hippo card on Maker Mornings with Meg the other day. Um, so remember that. This um, witch's hat stamp set is one of my faves. These are a couple of cards that I made um, using that, just really simple. Um, and then I love the purple and um, green and orange for uh, Halloween. So this green is Parakeet Party, which is one of the new in colors. This purple is Highland Heather, which is a light um, purple. And this orange is Pumpkin Pie. So if you're not sure which ones those are. And then not to be missed is the washi tape, um, the Glimmer washi tape. So, all right, another card from uh, Janice Waitman. Also here, you can see she used the black of the washi tape and a tag and that cute hat and that black and white paper not just for Christmas. I mean, Halloween, it could be for Christmas. Um, a really pretty wreath set um, with Gingham Cottage. This is card by Julie Davison, and I love how she's kind of anchored this element here with that really pretty piece of the gingham um, paper. And then what might be one of my favorite cards in, or favorite stamp sets in the catalog because it's punny and I love a punny greeting. Um, oh, I just realized these are plants and it says our friendship will live forever, um, unlike most of the plants I've owned. So uh, I definitely re represent that, resemble that remark. Um, this is cute, the little thank you with the hearts too. And then um, time for a cardigan, which is just darling. So here's a card by Karen Titus. And she used that same um, technique that I was telling you about. You just stamp this in the, um, this must be real red ink, and then just use water to mush the color around. No need to separately color. Um, and then versus this one, which is by the fabulous Missy Shipman. And Missy did a really cool um, coloring here to match this paper, which is from um, Celebrate Everything, which we're going to um, come up again. Oh, Kathy says she loves the pheasant card. It was by Mary Ellen Stites. Um, Rick says, OMG, I need that folder. Yes, totally agree. Um, that leaf folder, I didn't even realize how cool it was, so I need to order that too. And Marcy says, wow, why are you on in the evening? I know, I know. Um, usually in the um, usually in the morning, Marcy. Uh, so usually um, I'm on at 9.30 Central Time um, on Monday, selected Monday, Monday, Fridays. Um, as we're going through uh, the summer school time, but um, I'll be back to normal schedule. And I told everybody earlier, if you missed that, Marcy, um, that I'm going to be on uh, next week on Monday and Wednesday. So, and hi, Chris. All right. So ready for another card? This one is more of kind of a show and tell. So if you are one of my stampers um, and when you got your catalogs, you got some cardstock and some paper from me. Um, in the mail with your catalogs. And I included this because um, it is so easy to overlook this. In fact, I overlooked it just now. I closed my catalog and put it away. In the very back of the catalog is the host um, information. Uh, so there is a table here. So this Stampin' Rewards table is um, good for you if you um, are hosting a party, collecting orders, you can do that virtually. Um, if you want to host a party, let me know. We can set up a fun online party for you and your friends. They can be anywhere in the country, no problem. Um, or local party to me in central Illinois. Um, or if you have a really cool location and you want me to come to you, like, uh, you know, if you live in a great destination, I might take you up on that. Um, but the other thing that I wanted to make sure you know about these is because um, lots of us um, during celebration place larger orders. And so if your order is $150 or more, you actually get free stuff with your order. So um, the um, stamp rewards for a $150 order, even if it's just your own, um, is 10%. So you'll want to make sure you don't put in the um, hostess code. Uh, that is included in the video description. So because when you put um, when you earn your own host rewards, then you don't use my host code. Uh, so otherwise, if you are ordering less than $150, you should use the host code so that I can group your orders um, to get perks points with Meg. So free stuff. Um, all right. 
And you can learn more about Loven Stamps perk point, perks points on my website at Loven Stamps. So these are the celebration or the um, holiday catalog hostess items, which are a great price point. And I wanted to make sure you didn't miss this gorgeous paper. So I included it in your catalog pet mailing. So here is the Celebrate Everything um, 12 by 12 designer series paper. And I'm going to kind of flip it here so you can kind of see. Um, this is a selection of it. You get four sheets of each. Mine is missing a bunch because I already sent it out to people. Um, the uh, papers are bright, bold colors. They're black and white, some of them, and they celebrate everything. So there's Halloween, there's that paper Missy used, there um, is some cool rainbow paper, there is Christmas, there is uh, 4th of July or whatever fireworks occasion you want to use it for. Um, lots of great choices. So um, don't miss that because it is a 48 pack of paper for $18. It would be $30 in the catalog, but it's a host item, so you get like that bonus pricing on it. So don't miss that. And what would you do with these papers when they come? So how could you use them? So first of all, Granny Apple Green and Crushed Curry. So you could decide which one um, is your favorite for this. I'm gonna go ahead and fold my cardstock in half. And then these papers are sized so that you can kind of use them however you like. So um, what I might do is go ahead and take my paper trimmer and trim off um, a little strip here, maybe, I don't know, however much that is. <laughs> I'm gonna get my um, trimmer uh, score blade out of the way so I have this. And then maybe I'll do a little bit off of this one too so it's a little more square. And then I actually could do both cards um, with these pieces. So I could do my Granny Apple Green card like this and put those two papers together like this and then kind of come up with an element, um, maybe like a die cut element, kind of like we did here or a leaf element or probably not a leaf, um, but something like that. And then I could take those same two papers here and flip them along this way and have them be like this. Now, if you wanted to, you could also put another cardstock mat behind it. Um, if you guys watch my videos, you know that three by four DSP pieces are some of my very favorite to work with. Um, they're just a really great design size and um, lots of fun. So, all right, so here are two that I've already kind of done and stuck down. So you could do a horizontal card or a vertical card like this. Um, you could also do a horizontal card like this. And so depending on which papers you got in your um, in your catalog mailing from me, uh, there um, were lots and lots of possibilities. So I look forward to seeing what you guys make. So if you take those little card kits and, and make something from them, please post, um, please post, because I love to see that stuff. All right, so we're ready to see some more samples. Let's see, um, Kim says her wish list is getting longer, yes. Rick says he didn't see the folder until a um, couple of thumbs through the catalog. But yeah, I, I agree. Like seeing stuff on a video really makes it stand up for me a lot of times that I would miss otherwise. All right, so that brings us to celebration, uh, which if you are not familiar with, you're definitely going to want to become familiar. Sorry, I need a drink. Mm. Because celebration is free stamps. So the other day I showed... This fun little um, hippo card with that same background technique. Oh, I promised you more samples of that. Um, so these are a couple of cards that I made with that watercolor black technique. Um, so this is our beginning project here. And then these are cards that um, I did with a Sun Prints stamp set and Sun Prints designer series paper. Um, these, this, this one I think is a Maker Mornings with Meg project. So you could look back and see that if you would like. So more ideas on using those um, technique. And so I use that technique here on our hippo card. All right, so let's look through these. I have about 25 samples of these cards. So celebration. Now for each $50 you order, you get a free um, item from here. These are marked with this little icon and I have our cards here. So here is a swap card by Linda Bowen which I think is absolutely darling. I am in love with these hippos and I cannot get enough. This is one of the new in-color card socks. This looks like uh, Starry Sky. Um, and then it's lighter uh, cousin, lighter sister is Orchid 
um, Oasis, but um, Starry Sky. And then she just colored the hippo's uh, dress to match. And then she used the dies to go with it. See, little hearts, three all together, cut in once. The little top of the umbrella, super darling, um, and just really fun. So this card is by Tammy Ackerson. And she went ahead and die cut her hippo also. Um, this card is by Amy Story. And oh my gosh, so cute. This is this die right here. It's so easy to overlook these dies. Um, don't overlook them because they're cute. So she used the boat. She used the water die, edge die, to cut that. She used the die here to cut the little sunglasses. Um, just absolutely darling card. Uh, let's see. Then I have a, another one here by Cindy Bauman. And she made this darling hippo. And I love this little accent here. Amy did this too, where you give the um, hippo like little pink cheeks. Okay, so think about that. Here is a card by Mel Lampert, and she used a ton of the little um, die cut elements on this to decorate her hippos. Um, a card here by Kim Peck with um, a watercolor type background. So this is actually the stamp um, version, but you could do the same with our watercolor block technique that we're doing. And Rachel Chamberlain, whose card is super gorgeous also, and I love um, these scalloped edges. They're just a really great match for the hippos. And then finally, oh, not finally, um, another one from Mary McNeely, which um, has these repeated words on it, another hippo. Okay, can you tell the hippos have been popular? And then finally, my last hippo card is from Karen Titus, and she um, colored her hippo a little bit different color because it goes beautifully then with this designer series paper. So let me um, get our, some of our hippos uh, scooted out of the way here, and I will show you... Um, the uh, next page of our mini catalog because the next page is the Rings of Love designer series paper. Now this is designed to match with the Rings of Love stamp set um, and folder that are in the main catalog, but you can certainly use them independently too. Um, you don't have to use it that way, but you can see um, that Karen used this paper here as a background and uh, I think this is probably three by four this paper that she used. So another example of using three by four designer series paper on a card. Um, other ideas for this, here's one by Julie Davison. She used that punch that I was raving about in the catalog. And then um, this just absolutely beautiful um, designer series paper. Uh, I'm really gonna fall in love with this. And the little wooden elements. So these are a really cute um, accent too. Here's another card. Um, this is by Jill Olson. She used the same paper that Julie did, but she flipped up the edges and did like a little rip here. And I really love the way it shows off the beautiful coordinating blue that's on the back of that same paper. And the words that she used are from the next page, um, not the next page, they're from the page coming up, um, the amazing phrasing um, stamp set, which is free with a $100 purchase. And so these words um, are right out of there. So you can mix and match them, amazing, you did it, um, all kinds of fun things. I just used that stamp set the other day. Um, and then this is by Natalie Travis, and she used that same um, designer series paper here. So lots of good um, possibilities for using this uh, with lots of different uh, stamp sets and so forth, so, all right. I'm gonna get these out of the way. And then next, we will move on to the next page. Um, oh, I don't have a sample of a card with these, but I do have them to show you. So they are the envelopes um, with the inserts here and then the pre-printed cards. Um, so these are the cards and envelopes in Celebration Book Pool Party and Soft Sea Foam. Uh, and so these are great for quick cards. Um, you could just stamp something um, and put it on there. I'm trying to get another one out. There's the green. Um, so really gorgeous. And you get 20 of them um, as your free items. So, All right, then we have Stylish Sketches a stamp set, which I think we'll see more of. Um, and this is um, a really pretty one. So this is by Janice Waitman. And she actually used the um, paper from the previous page, the um, this paper here that has those wood rings in the background. It's a really gorgeous match here for this pretty fox. And the You're Looking Good is actually from the next page, which is in Amazing Phrasing. So lots of possibilities there too. All right, which brings us to our next page. This card is by Kathy Parlitzis. 
and she used the gold paper here, and then this is um, gold from the annual catalog, I think. I'm actually not certain. Um, if you remember, let me know. And oh, Deanna says she loves the hippos. Uh, they are cute, aren't they? Especially with all their accoutrements, all their accessories, because uh, everyone needs to accessorize their hippopotamus, right? Um, I'm pretty sure that there's gotta be a, a Christmas card in there too, that's something about, I want a hippopotamus for Christmas. Only hippopotamus, will, I'll stop singing now. But you can continue that on. And if you're singing the hippopotamus song for the rest of your evening, I am so happy to have shared that with you now. <laughs> All right, uh, so woohoo to you um, too is from Amazing Phrasing. They're separate words and you just mix and match to combine them, so really fun. Um, this is a Halloween card by Ann Clemmer and she used Hey Good Lookin, which is really fun with the witch um, hat and punch. And I didn't say before, but the witch um, hat is a punch with this little cute brim. And I actually love this just as punched cardstock with a stamped feet. So very cute, Anne. Um, all right, then we're going to flip the page to my favorite from the celebration. Mm, I don't know, maybe my favorite. I like all of them. This is the one I'm gonna feature though during the month of July. So it features the Trees for Sale stamp set. This card is by Laura Barto, which is in the annual, or not the annual, sorry. Trees for Sale is in the mini catalog. And then um, the dies that cut it all out are here as an element in the celebration. They're free with a $100 order. Um, so this de designer folder in the background that I showed you on the Yeti card um, is from the catalog, the stamps. Um, it, it's going to be a favorite. And I actually, I love the orchid and the starry sky together. So really pretty, Laura. All right. But in my opinion, the um, true heroes of the Trees for Sale stamp set are these dies. And look at all of the pieces. So yes, you can make just Christmas trees, but you can also make camper pieces and little dog pieces and Christmas lights and like there are a zillion pieces here. Oh, look at this little, okay. Anyway, it's a lot of mix and match and all the fun things. So here is a sample by, um, they did not sign it, but it is a great, great card. So you can kind of see here, this one, um, die here used like on silver paper and then split to make the top and the bottom of the camper. And look, you can make the camper in the window in the background and a little wreath and the little like peg thing. And then here is another card um, by Teresa Tucker, and she made a little silver camper too, like those little Airstreams. And here's the best example of how you can see um, the designer, or sorry, that embossing folder that I've been talking about. You can see it in the background here. So those, um, if you're gonna want to make the um, Loven Stamps tutorials for the month of July, the way they come out, um, exactly, you're gonna need uh, the die set and the stamps and that folder and stuff. So you might as well just add them to your list now. All right, cute, right? Are you guys a huge fan of the campers? Oh, and Jenny, you're awesome. Jenny says um, the distressed gold paper um, is this one and it's in the annual catalog. Thanks, Jenny. Oh, this is the best part about um, doing live videos, right? We can all, we're all in it together. Uh, Kathy says a camper's her second favorite. And Teresa asked about rings of love. Does the die cut out the rings on the designer series paper? Yes, it does. It actually shows that in the catalog. So let's go back to this little fox card. Um, let's get my cute campers out of the way. As much as I hate to say goodbye to them as they turn the page. Um, the rings of love is right here and it shows how you can cut out those rounds there with the die that's in the catalog. So definitely, yes, okay. All right, um, past Rings of Love and on to the Wonderful World stamp set and designer series paper combo. This was the most popular one from the um, card swaps that I did with other demonstrator friends. And so here's the card that I did. Um, I used the orchid and the starry sky and a piece of the designer series paper and this um, greenery. Um, piece and then uh, one of the greetings here from um, You're Amazing. You've got this. And uh, just sort of a subdued set of colors. Um, but these stamps are gorgeous. And so it looks like the stamp is almost colored. 
Um, this is a really, really cool technique. I didn't color it. All I did was ink it and stamp it once. And the um, stamp texture itself, the rubber is textured so that you get this super light internal and then the super dark accents. Same here. That is all done by the stamp. So um, again, a reason that I absolutely love stamps, um, the stamps that, that Stampin' Up! carries are just so high quality. Um, Kelly Sheridan says she learned that you can use the rings die inside of the embossing folder. Yes, that is a really cool trick um, that, that Stampin' Up! came up with in the last year or so. So lots of good possibilities there. All right, so there's one of those. Um, here's another one. This is by Leanne Greff um, again, and she used probably markers to color the um, stems green. So you take your stamp and you color green and then blue so that you can get your multicolor in there. Um, here is another one. This is by Rebecca or by Becky Prather, and she did the same thing. Um, had the two different colors on the stamp. Um, this one is by Susan Lacroix, and this designer series paper here um, is all part of this. So when you order this as your celebration item, you actually get um, a full package of designer series paper and the um, stamp set with it. So lots of possibilities. This is by Mary Ellen Stites. And I love the way she did this um, here with a piece of, again, three by four designer series paper, the best size, and um, stamps on top. This card is by uh, Mary McCormick. And Mary did a fun fold here. So you can kind of see there. So this is the front of the card. She trimmed away the extra from the, um, the green layer and then uh, had this so mossy meadow probably here and then had this strip inside which shows from the back, which is a really gorgeous way to show off um, some strips of designer series paper, especially if you have strips left over. And then finally, this card is by Amanda Hincamper, and I wanted to show it to you because in this designer series paper package, there is this sheet here with these giant uh, flowers in it, and so what she did was just fussy cut around this giant flower so that she could layer it on here as a big accent, so, um, and then, uh, can you kind of see these like three little um, rhinestones, iridescent rhinestones um, here, just an accent, the corners, uh, the intersections of that paper. So, all right, Whew. let's see. I don't know about you guys, but that was a lot of cards. <laughs> so I hope you're enjoying them all. Um, when we're done here, if you jumped in some point along the way, you can of course go back and uh, re-watch some of your favorite parts. Um, I love, love, love putting videos together for you guys. Um, there are always so many ideas uh, that we just can't cover all at once. So be sure to keep an eye on more um, Maker Mornings with Meg. Um, I'll be back on Monday and Wednesday next week with a couple more projects for you out of the um, new uh, celebration and holiday catalog. Um, other things to be aware of, if you are a demonstrator and you are interested in doing some cool demonstrator training, we have the 17th Annual Vacation Stamping School coming up. Um, it'll be in August. Um, it'll be a virtual event again online, but you will um, be able to sign up for that starting now. Uh, registration closes the 11th. There's a link in the video description there, so you can check um, that out. And if you are not a demonstrator, like what? stamping tutorials and things that I'd like to see and techniques and cool ideas and sweet projects. Um, you don't have to miss out. You can sign up to be a demonstrator. Um, there is a really great special going on right now during celebration and I almost uh, forgot to show you, but I'll pull this over here. Um, this is the cool stuff that you get um, along with your starter kit. So as always, you pick out uh, $125 of product that you want in your kit. You get that for $99. The shipping is a free or shipping is free. Um, so it's a great deal always. But then during July and August, the special is um, that you get this fabulous planner. It is gorgeous. Here it is. And a very nice quality. Um, there are um, a bazillion, that's the technical term, uh, pages <laughs> that come with it. So here's them from the side. That's how many bazillion pages there are. Um, but they are like dividers and tabs and um, numbers and then there's all these like monthly focus things. So you can use this 
Um, there's calendar pages. You can use it really however you like. So however you like to use a planner, this book is for you. Um, there are a couple, um, a whole bunch of sheets of like stickers and headers and things like that to go with it. There's an exclusive stamp set called Making Plans that's available only with this um, kit. So kind of fun here with like lots of little to-dos and things. Um, I actually really like list making, so that one's kind of a fan for me. And then um, I have the three notebooks that come with it. So you get these um, a little notebook trio here of fun Stampin' Up! notebooks to go with the planner. So that um, is the additional gift for signing up during uh, July and August. So um, plus then you can sign up for uh, vacation stamping school. So let's see. Um, Diana says hello from North Carolina. Hello. Hi, Lisa. Um, and Sue says that she saw lots of stuff in her video that she hadn't seen right away. So that is really fabulous also. And then, uh, let's see, I told you about the paper share, um, sign up for the paper share no later than Friday. Um, it's going to close then. And I am really just, I love when new catalogs come out because there are so many fun ideas to see. Um, just the combinations of colors and textures and the clever way the stamps are made. Um, and sometimes like I see things when I'm talking through it with you guys that I haven't even seen like to date. So like for example, to really appreciate how beautiful those um, images are on the Wonderful World stamps. Like they're gorgeous. The the different coloration there in that stamp, you just stamp it once and you get all those fun shades and tones. Um, it's really beautiful. So uh, I love to look through things and see stuff with you guys too. Um, all right. So if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I am always happy to answer them for you. Uh, let's see, the um, catalogs are good for two months for celebration. So that one, this one um, will end on August 31. Uh, I usually, okay, so the most common question I get from new demonstrators, I've already had this question a couple times during celebration, um, or for people looking at being new demonstrators is, do you get celebration stamp sets when you order the starter kit? And the answer to that is that the starter kit items are already discounted, so you don't get additional celebration items for free. You get the planner stuff, you get all of this for free, but not like um, not like the, you know, you don't pick out this kind of celebration item. So, but it's no problem because as a demonstrator, you get a discount on all of your own orders. And so my um, suggestion is always to pick out the $125 or whatever you want to go in your starter kit and then to um, plan out your next wish list. And then when you your stuff comes through as a demonstrator, usually it's, sometimes it's within minutes, sometimes it's within 24 hours, um, sometimes it takes two days. But when your demonstrator um, stuff comes through, then you can log on to the website and you can place your own order as a demonstrator with your discount and that one will earn celebration items. So definitely um, you're not gonna miss out, which is always uh, always good. No one wants to miss out on the cool stuff, right? All right, guys, um, thanks so much for hanging out with me this evening. I hope your Tuesday has been fabulous. I hope you have great plans for the rest of your week. Um, and let's see, what else am I missing? Oh, Leanne says that my shirt looks like designer series paper. It really does, right? Um, it is actually a double brushed poly that I got at uh, Walmart and made into this fun top for a pattern test for this company called Sinclair Pattern. So if you're a sewist, a sew person who sews is a sewist, not a sewer. <laughs> anyway, um, if you're a sewist, Sinclair Patterns is like one of my faves, so. Uh, let's see, anything else? Yes, lots of people seem excited. So as you can tell, I am also. All right, so I'm gonna sign off. If you missed part of this and you wanna go back to the beginning to see our cool card um, from the beginning, you'll definitely um, want to go back to check out that fun technique with the Rustic Harvest Suite and the Harvest Hello stamp set. Thanks guys, have a wonderful rest of your evening. Happy stamping.